so that's why he wears that in his left ear, and not because... Well, never mind. Um, Kai kind of freaks out and asks him to where he got lost technology like this, and who the hell is he anyway? I'd explain it to you, but you wouldn't believe me. Besides, there's no time. <laughs> While Vash had his guard down, some bad lads have already shown up and start blasting away at him. Kite runs out to see the bad lads near fatally wounded and Vash in a panic. He drops everything and starts tending to their wounds, saying he didn't mean to hit them in any vital areas. Are you serious? Are you actually saying that you purposely avoided killing them the entire time? What? What the hell? I don't understand you! No matter how good a shot you are, unless you shoot to kill, you're gonna get yourself killed! This is another little shocker. Vash can actually be injured pretty bad in this case, which only adds to that question of how he survived so long without killing anybody. He tells Kite that he knows it's stupid, but if he even took one life, he feels like it would break her heart. Her? That's all Vash tells Kite in the anime. In the manga, he pretty much tells Kite all about Rem, complete with a mini flashback. Again, the manga never attempts to keep secrets from us, while the anime absolutely thrives on it, even up through the finale. Kite tells him his soft-heartedness is going to get him killed, remembering how his parents left one day never to return, or some interpret this as his father running off with another woman, but we really don't know. Anyway, after becoming an orphan, Neon took him in with the promise of food and money. The world has not been too kind to the spunky urchin, and his story is going to be repeated by another more important character later in the series, along with Vash's advice. Then you should start over. What? The ticket to the future is always open. Like I mentioned in episode 4, this is in pretty direct opposition to what he said back then. It would explain his desire not to kill anyone. He truly believes everyone has the right to turn their lives around and every life is sacred. But then, why does he have such a fixation on the past? Well, this comes back to that whole thing of Vash not thinking of himself as human. There are provisions he makes for humanity that he doesn't allow himself because he doesn't allow them for someone else that's a lot like him. Sorry if that's confusing, but it isn't going to come into full flux until much, much later, so for now I'll just leave it at that. Well, unfortunately, Neon figures out what the two are doing. I don't believe that luck has anything to do with this. And sends false directives to the bad lads to various parts of the ship, all except one unprotected stairwell. The wounded Vash stumbles to this open spot that Kite leads him to, only to discover... They've been tricked. Neon and all his gang are now gathered in one spot with their guns turned toward Vash. I actually do feel for you. Via Gandios. That's far enough. Yeah, I forgot they existed for a while there too, but while the bad lads were searching for Vash earlier, two unlucky fly guys ran into the insurance girls and Marilyn Millie stole their gear to get the jump on Neon. My question is, where in the world was Millie hiding her stun gun under all that? Oh, whatever, they find themselves at an impasse, and if they waste all their time duking it out, they'll all go down with the steamer, so they settle on a duel. If Neon wins, Vash dies. Vash obviously won't kill Neon if he wins, but he makes Neon promise to stop the ship, and they head to the upper decks to draw. Neon decides not to kill Vash, and grumpily tells his right-hand man, Baramy, that he didn't hit Vash even once. The moron tore his own wounds open. In his mind's eye, he lost, and Vash has preserved his good name. Now, this is weird. What does a bad guy like Neon care about a good name? Well, an awful lot, actually. As I said before, he's a perfectly honest criminal, and cares a lot about his reputation. He just wants a reputation as a ruthless, monstrous devil of high-style thrills and mayhem. But even if he is a thief, he's a professional and a man of his word, so he gives the go-ahead to slam on the brakes. Unfortunately, all the damage the ship has been taking has torn up the central braking system, and they continue to race to the edge of cliff at 88 miles an hour. 
Oh. Kite immediately offers to show them the way to an old engine room inside the boiler where an emergency stop lever is located, but soon finds out his open ticket to the future doesn't erase his past. I'll never forget watching my fellow crewmate as he was killed right in front of me. I will not accept help from you. Now at this point, the manga diverges heavily from the anime account. At this point in the manga, it's revealed that the steamer runs on plant energy, which is kind of overkill, I think. Those things are so expensive, only large cities can afford them. And the idea of it running on steam energy works just fine. We don't need a plant. Those things are huge, they're expensive, they just don't seem to fit inside a steamer. And it's also a waste of one. I mean, those things have the power to make the steamer bloody fly, much less travel at, I don't know, 88 paltry miles an hour. Point is, this is where the climax of episode 6 actually occurred in the manga, with Vash going to calm the plant and slow the steamer not save the town. Although it's in far more detail and explains much more about the plant, stuff that we won't learn until way later in the anime series. After that, the two start matching up again, but suffice to say, with this event added in, there were way too many but then suddenlies in the manga. And keeping a plant on board seems pretty silly, so I'm glad they changed it. Back to the anime, the crewmen pry open the engine room, but it's been filled with matrix upon matrix of piping over the years, and it's impossible to claw through them to the lever. Unless, of course, you are pint-sized. Kite bursts in and crawls over the searing hot pipes to slam down the emergency release, releasing a flood of compressed steam and cutting off the machine's power completely. But inertia is a total bitch, and the steamer is not screeching to a halt fast enough with only a few yards to the cliffside. Neon, very much a man of his word, keeps his promise to stop the ship by crashing his own into its side and grinding them into the side of a canyon, before leaving with his gang and letting Kite go. Who says there's no honor among thieves? Everyone survives, there's even more. And Kite sings what he calls a really old song. From somewhere out of nowhere drops upon my dreaming world. That's Rem's song, Bash remembers. Now what is it about? Well, if you listen to the lyrics, it's a metaphor for the birth and development of humanity on some other planet, from a pebble falling from the sky on the first evening to children from the pebble emerging to dance on the second evening, up through seven more days and an eighth morning where the whole journey has created a beautiful song called Sound Life. Sounds like Rem was an optimist, but more than that, this is the first hinting at Trigon's extensive use of biblical symbolism, in this case, the world being created in seven days. The fall of man using apples as symbols, and the idea of Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel, and the Garden of Eden are also going to come up later. The Sand Steamer story makes up my favorite episodes in the series, and even though I'm not real crazy about the manga, they are as faithful to the manga as the anime will ever get. Things deviate to a nearly impossible to compare degree after this, but I'll do my best to keep up with it. The same sorts of things happen, the same messages get across, but in different orders and different ways with different attitudes. Again, mostly the manga tells us too much too fast, while the anime takes its time and tells us very little. It will really start not telling us anything with the next episode, and the introduction of possibly Trigon's most popular character, the Preacher Man. <laughs>